Hey guys, this is Shlok for Teespring and welcome to the second video in this Teespring training series. So let's get started. Uh, in this video, I'll talk mostly about how to run Facebook ads and I'll try to cover it as comprehensively as possible and share the things that we do in my company to get good success. So uh, before we get to the ads part, uh, I wanted to cover the basics and uh, the preparation that you need to have uh, so the things that uh, the things that you will be needing to run your ads and i'm sure a lot of you already have business manager uh, have your pages and have created ads in the past but i wanted to talk a little bit about this so that people who are just getting started and don't have a business manager also get the idea of how they need to proceed and uh, so that i can ensure that everybody is on the same page so, uh, why you need a business manager? So even though you can run ads uh, from an ad account uh, using your personal profile, uh, there's a lot of limitation to that. Uh, you can only create one ad in that way. But if you have a business manager, uh, I have taken this screenshot right from Facebook. So if you have a business manager, you can create more than one ad account. So say you are targeting very big niches you might want to have uh, one ad account for each of those niches so this allows you to create a more than one ad account and you can manage all your pages at one place inside from inside the business manager and this just gives you much more flexibility and ease of use and allows you to keep your personal facebook and business facebook uh, profile different all right so if you don't have a business manager it's uh, just uh, just get one and it's a very simple process just go to google write uh, uh, open a facebook business manager and uh, you'll get a link and you can just follow the very simple guidelines from facebook to create it so once you have the business manager uh, you'll need to create a niche specific page to which you want to advertise a lot of people use uh, generic pages also where uh, they advertise all their campaigns in various niches from just one page but i advise people to create niche specific pages as this gives you more authority so say today i'm going to give the example in the bartender niche so if you want to advertise to bartenders i suggest you create a specific page for bartenders as this will give you more authority and it will also allow you to build very targeted custom audiences later on where your page grows up to a few thousand people uh, and more so once once you have taken care of that you need to create an ad account and set up the payment method there so that you can use it for advertising uh, after creation of the ad account you can go to the pixels tab where they will give you a pixel code uh, you just need to grab that pixel number that is um, placed inside the pixel code and add it to your Teespring account so that your sales can be tracked and once you have done all these things you are all set and guys this uh, uh, most all of this is a very straightforward process so uh, if you go to google or youtube you should be able to very easily it's almost uh, you can just follow the guidelines and uh, complete this process but if anybody needs any more hand holding with any of these processes uh, uh, make sure that you comment after this video is posted uh, you, uh, you comment and i'll come back and help you out uh, in more detail all right so let's get to the next part so uh, the other more uh, the other uh, very important thing that i wanted to talk about before getting into ads is the pricing your products on teespring uh, since if you price your products uh, very high there's a chance that people will not buy and if you price your products too low uh, it will cut into your profits and after running advertisements on Facebook, you will not be able to stay profitable. So I've shared a screenshot right from my, da my dashboard of the prices that we set in my company. So you can go through this uh, t-shirts, hoodies and mugs are the three best selling products. So I have also shared the range that we that we uh, that we uh, go after when advertising these products. Uh, Hence, tagless tea is the feature product that we select in my company uh, during the summer seasons and the price we go with uh, mostly is $21.99 for one-sided uh, prints and if it's a two-sided print 
we go with a price point of 23.99 or 24.99 uh, uh, you might think that uh, offering uh, this products for cheaper might boost the conversion rate uh, even we thought this in the uh, thought this before so we have tested this extensively and we have found that even offering it at a bit lower than this price point doesn't have any effect on uh, conversion at least for us so guys uh, don't be afraid to uh, price your products in this range there's no need to go lower than this because it will just cut into your profits all right so uh, for shirts it's 19.99 to 24.99 for hoodies it's 37.99 to 39.99 <coughs> and for mugs we price it between 13.99 to 15.99 uh, make sure that you include mugs in all your campaigns because teespring does a very good job of when somebody clicks on the buy it now button uh, teespring will try to include mugs uh, to your buyers uh, with a nice message uh, saying do you want to include this mug for this much price so a lot of time it increases the average order value uh, with, with when people buy the shirt as well as the mug so include mugs right and just go through the pricing here for the other products uh, this is what we follow and it converts well for us uh, you might see that the profit margins that showing here on my dashboard is on a bit higher side but that is because uh, we sell a lot of products with teespring and that's why we are in the top tier so it should serve as a motivation for you also uh, as you sell more and more uh, your profit per product is going to increase uh, till it hits this point so it's pretty sweet to get a 17 dollar profit on one sale of on one shirt sale right all right uh, some more considerations you can see that i provided a range here so for shirts uh, this is a range of five dollars which you can say is a pretty big range so the consideration that you should have for pricing their product is uh, there are two considerations that you need to have the first is uh, how passionate these people are obviously uh, plays a major role so if they are very passionate uh, uh, you can price it at a bit higher and people will still buy it if they uh, like the message on the shirt the other consideration uh, is the amount of money the people in that niche have uh, for example say you are selling to people who who, who fly airplanes uh, who as a hobby who are into the flying hobby so obviously it means that uh, if they can buy airplanes they have a lot of money so they would not mind buying the uh, shirts even at a higher price so you can price the products at a bit higher side uh, in contrast to say you are selling to selling a shirt to somebody who is employed in a blue collar job uh, there's a chance that they might not buy if the price is on the higher side so just have this consideration while pricing your products all right so once that is taken care of let's move on to the next part so we come to running ads on facebook so there are a lot of questions uh, before that uh, that needs to be answered and i see these questions popping up every now and then so people always ask whether it's good to run all ads from a single ad account or whether I should have multiple ad accounts for each of my niche. So the, the thing that we do in my company is uh, for very big niches, we have individual ad accounts and the niches where the audience size is medium or on a bit lower side, we advertise all of them from one ad account. I'll give you an example. Say we are targeting uh, the mom niche the general mom niche then we'll have a single ad account uh, from which all ads in the mom niche are done whereas if we are targeting uh, say some jobs uh, where the audience size is medium uh, like bartender or mechanics will uh, run all the ads from one single ad account like we are in say if i i'm in 50 niches uh, for the top 5 to 10 niches we'll have individual ad accounts and the next 40 niches all the ads will be run from a single ad account i hope that makes sense so that is what you can follow as well uh, when you are starting out it's just better to have one ad account from which you can uh, run uh, campaigns for all the niches uh, since that it's much easier to manage uh, that way if you have too many ads accounts, that would be spreading yourself too thin and it will di get difficult to manage things all right so even with uh, a single ad account for all the niches what you can do is you can create custom conversions for niches and this you can consider this custom conversions as sub pixels 
so you can allocate a specific digit code to each niche say for the bartender niche you can allocate 101 and once you have created that custom conversion code after, after that every bartender campaign that you create should have the the code 101 somewhere in the URL so whenever some purchase happens on that bartender campaign this custom conversion or what we call it as sub pixel will get a fire once this custom conversion has 400 500 fires after that you can start optimizing for that particular custom conversion so it almost as acts as a pixel uh, uh, this allows you to run um, ads in many niches using one single ad account while still being able to optimize for uh, the conversion in that niche uh, probably I can show it to you later on uh, so that it makes more sense to you all right uh, so the next thing is another very important thing is that all ad accounts are different and perform according to how you train your ad account so what I mean by this is say in one ad account you run a lot of PPE ads after a certain time it will uh, get acclimatized to page post engagement ads and uh, might give you better results with page post engagement ads than any other ad objective similarly if you have a different ad account where you run website conversion ads uh, with purchase objective after a time it will get a knack uh, of that conversion objective and probably will perform better with website conversion purchase objective uh, than with any other and uh, any other ad objective See, it's the same with the budget also if you are from a certain ad account you turn a lot of campaigns at higher budget after a while it might start giving you better results with higher ad budgets um, in, uh, in compared comparison to when you run uh, campaigns with smaller budgets in that ad account all right so these are small and important things because uh, it's important to understand how Facebook works before we start advertising since if you have this small concept uh, you just increase you have more knowledge than most of the people in this space and you just increase your chances of having success all right so the next thing is creating your ads and by the way I'll show just I'll show you in a while how to do it live I just want to get it covered so that you understand the process first so uh, on the right hand side if I'm even sharing one of uh, the top selling on one of my top selling designs not I'd not say top selling but uh, well performing designs uh, on the right hand side this uh, is in the bartender niche I think it got somewhere around 100 orders so it says uh, some take drugs some twist throttles I solve problems by opening bottles so if you recall in the first video I had talked about scalable ideas so this is a scalable idea that was implemented in the motorcycling niche where it did well so we took it from the motorcycling niche and you can see that we didn't implement it directly we made a very subtle yet a nice we gave it a nice spin uh, which makes it very different from the original content uh, I think in that one it said some take drugs some uh, open bottles I solve problems by uh, twisting throttles so we we changed the words and we made it up in the bartender niche and it immediately connected with the niche and we were able to do well with this particular design so uh, so for creating the ads now uh, the thing that is working the best for us is photo post uh, with 1200 by 1650 pixel uh, these are tall images so it gives you more space on a person's uh, desktop or a mobile and just more real estate for you so it converts better Facebook introduced this a few months back and it's just performing very well for us currently all right uh, another question that is asked very frequently is if you should be running a dark post or a published post so we do both in my company currently uh, we start with published post so a published post is something that you do directly from your page and all your fans and anybody who is allowed to access your page can come to your page and it will appear for them whereas a dark post is something that will not be published on the page and it will only be used for running ads so somebody who lands on your page uh, they will not be able to see that post anywhere on your page unless uh, you target them with your ads when they can see it or if they have a direct link to the post then they can uh, paste it in the URL then they'll be able to access it so both of them have their own advantages 
uh, with the published post i feel that you like say you have a page like we do in the bartender niche where we have thousands of likes so uh, we get uh, when we do a published post we get a good amount of organic reach uh, so before even running ads we have a, a slight idea whether the uh, design is going to do well or not and with the organic reach we uh, on various occasions we also get few sales out of it so that is the advantage of the published post whereas a dark post since it will not be published on the page page you miss out on the initial organic reach uh, but the benefit with this is you avoid copycats to a certain extent uh, uh, people who who just uh, visit your page to rip off your designs they'll not be able to see see that particular post so you avoid copycats with dark posts so we start with a published post uh, when we are doing a new campaign and if it uh, if it starts doing well we create a new dark post and then we start advertising to that dark post uh, later on so that the majority of our traffic from facebook ads goes to the dark post and since it will not show up for the copycats uh, they'll not know that uh, okay this particular post has got so much engagement uh, they'll just look at the published post that was launched initially that has less engagement so uh, we are able to avoid copycats to a certain extent uh, the uh, things that follow i think you will understand this better if i show it to you in the ads manager so let's 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 show you a live example so i just created a facebook page to show you how to show you how to make a post so uh, i'll just create a post with the example in the bartender niche that i just showed you uh, i created this page called bartender's rule uh, i have not added the profile picture and the cover page but you should as soon as you create a page you should be adding this so i'll cover a bit more since we are here already uh, when you create a new page you should be adding a profile picture and a cover photo and uh, to uh, give that authenticity to the page initially you should also be adding some pictures uh, six seven pictures is enough uh, just to give that authenticity to the to the page and so that people think that you uh, actually have a genuine page all right so uh, after that is done uh, it's uh, good to create your ad post in the page and start running ads to it uh, uh, some people say that uh, you should also run some uh, like campaigns to get likes to your pages uh, we don't bother with it because i feel that uh, your money should be spent at the place where you get maximum results so when you start advertising to it uh, anyways you will get uh, people who will who will click to your page and like your page so when you are running your normal ads for uh, getting sales that time also people will come and like your pages so you'll grow your page organically so i don't feel there is a need to run ads to get likes to the page but make sure that you do add the uh, profile picture the cover photo and some six seven images that you source from the internet just make sure that they are uh, royalty free images uh, that you can use and uh, it, does, uh, it does not uh, copy uh, the trademark it's not a property of any third party you can find go to google and like you can um, go to advanced setting to sort out images that are free to use commercially and you can find decent images so just make sure that you use those images and um, give some authenticity to your page so once that is done uh, you want to create the post from which you can run ads so i'll show you an example of a published post and this is the this is the de design for which will be creating the post so i'll show you an example of a published post and how we cre create the description and the photo that we use in our uh, posts for that we use for advertising so uh, let me create the description for this one bartenders solve problems by opening bottles Uh, available 
here. Tag and here the someone who would love this. All right. What else can we do here? All right, let's grab our 1200 by 1650 image. Okay, here it is. Get our Teespring campaign link. Post it here. And use, okay, let's use this one. Oops, spelling other. All right, let's publish the post. So you can see our page, our post is published here. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the description that I've used. Uh, guys, uh, the description uh, now with competition increasing on Facebook ads, you also need to make your description interactive. And I think I could have done a little better here, but I, just uh, to give you an idea, uh, what you should be doing is in the first line, uh, say something that they'll connect with. So I've just taken a part of the message from the design and used it here. It says bartender solve problems by opening bottles. You could, you could do something like this or you could ask a question uh, that encourages more curiosity or a response from them in form of comments. And in the second uh, line, uh, drop your drop your link with a soft sell uh, and in the third line just ask them for uh, even more engagement in uh, form of tag and shares and use of smiley works very well so uh, use smileys uh, this gift thing works very works well with uh, like these are all some kind of a trigger point so when they say see this gift icon they feel that this is something uh, that the need for us it also works well when uh, you present a shirt to somebody to give to somebody else and then in this third line we say something like tag and share with someone who would love this we have used this heart smiley so smiley is something that works well in the description just make sure that you uh, take some time to carve out your description also as this needs to be dis uh, to be interactive and should ask for even encourage people to in engage more on your post all right uh, this is a 1200 by 1650 photo post and this is what you should be using uh, when people uh, see these ads on their smartphones it will take almost 80 percent of their screen space so, so there's a very good chance that they will take notice of your ads all right so this is how you create the post and now we'll be using this for the advertisement. I, uh, this is the example of a published post. It's there on our page. When somebody uh, uses the link to our page and visits this, they'll see it here. So, uh, and this is uh, different from dark post. If we had done made a dark post, then people would not have seen this post on when they had visited the page. All right. So uh, once we have created our post, I'd like to show you how to create the ads and the uh, objectives and uh, the budgeting that we use and how we uh, do the targeting for our ads so uh, let me get the ads manager here uh, i just created a new ads account in my business manager for this demonstration i have named it bartender so uh, you can use the ads manager uh, so you can uh, I see the reports of from the AdWords manager this is the AdWords manager and uh, for creating the ads we use uh, something called power editor that Facebook gives you access to so I'll just open up the power editor and it might seem uh, like I am sure a lot of people are already using it uh, but if you're not used it earlier it might seem a little bit intimidating in the beginning but once you get a hang of it and um, see the features that it offers uh, you'll just want to use it it saves a lot of time you can create uh, you can easily duplicate and create a lot of ads uh, at one go using power ed editor so 
I'll be using power editor to show you how to create the ads all right so our post is done here so let's create an, an ad for that particular post so I go to create campaign and uh, you can see a lot of objectives here so what is the objective that you should be selecting for uh, for your advertisements so uh, we always we most often do conversion objective and this is what works the best for when you are trying to uh, make a sale on teespring uh, but if you have a new if you create a new ad account uh, you could also try page post engagement in the beginning but i would suggest that page post engagement be complementary to the conversion ads uh, even when it's a new advert account it will take some time for Facebook to find buyers for you, but I still recommend going with conversion objective because you want to get your ads account trained as fast as possible and also for the objective that you're looking for. So uh, uh, just go with this conversion objective. All right, so let's create a campaign. Uh, we'll name it Bartender Sol website conversion and choose the campaign objective as conversion we create a ad set that stays in, under the campaign and the ad that is under the ad set so you can see the name of the campaign here we are at the campaign level and uh, conversion is the objective that we have selected go to the ad set level where we need to go and select our country targeting and uh, conversion event <coughs> excuse me so the first thing that you need to select is the conversion event and you can see a lot of options here so our objective is getting sales on teespring so the conversion event that we need to select uh, should always be either purchase or add to basket since our end objective is making a sale uh, and guys it's uh, kind of a balancing act because let me show you a thing here so you can see in the next slide here facebook says that at a minimum your ad set needs to be getting 15 to 25 of the conversions it's optimized for per week to have a chance at success and then again it says 15 to 25 is only a bare minimum 50 to 100 plus is ideal so what facebook means by this is say we are optimizing for add to basket event it means that our ad should get our this particular ad set should get at least 15 to 25 ads to basket each week so that facebook has enough data to optimize our ads and uh, when Facebook says this, I, they are serious about it. We have tested it and we have seen uh, Facebook being able to optimize our ads much better and get us better results as the ad progresses over time. And it has uh, an ample number of uh, hits on the objective that we are optimizing it for. Say we are optimizing for ad to basket and once we have 25 to 30 hits on uh, here, 25 to 30 uh, ads to basket for this particular ad set. Uh, we see that we gradually start getting better results if the audience size is big all right so uh, uh, so optimize for optimize for add to basket if you feel that you may not be able to get 15 or 20 purchases in a week but um, I'd also not suggest uh, going for view content because you can get a lot of view content but uh, if you uh, if you optimize for view content uh, it's not it does not convert into add to uh, add to cart or purchases as well as when we select the purchase or add to cart event all right so let's select to add to basket you can see that uh, this is showing red color because as i said i have created this ad account for demonstration so it does not have any uh, pixel files for add to basket or purchase recently so uh the other thing to consider here is the budget that you need to be setting so 
in the past we used to do a lot of ad sets under one campaign with smaller budgets say three ad sets at five dollars each and we were able to get good results but recently facebook has made it very clear that they prefer uh, uh, prefer lesser number of ad sets with a higher budget and it makes more sense because uh, if we give them a bigger audience size and a bigger budget uh, they can look into and decide on a pool or a bucket of audience that are most relevant for us and after after spending of some money they can it can learn uh, the people who are most relevant for us in that particular audience segment that we have provided to them so uh, currently from the last from the last one month uh, what we are doing is we are creating a single campaign with a budget of twenty dollars and giving Facebook a good enough audience size so that it can look inside it and find the most apt buyers for us all right so uh, we'll let the budget stay at twenty dollars and uh, uh, we we have tried running campaigns with lifetime budget and it performs well when the niche is very big like I gave an example of the gave the example of the mom niche so their the audience size would be too big so you can try lifetime budget uh, and uh, say we run the campaign uh, for a period of one month from 30th July to 30th August and we set the budget to $3,000 so that would be <coughs> $100 per day so it works for very big niches but I, as I said jobs like bartender it's a medium sized niche so for that we prefer to go with daily budget and uh, not uh, set an end date to it so I'll let it run as ongoing and the budget as $20 daily budget and I'll select the location to United States uh, that design is for women so we want to target women Facebook has an ad policy that if you are advertising an alcohol product it has to the audience size has to be over 20 over 20, 21 or over 21 so we select it as 21 to and over 65 plus and then we go and do our targeting so the easiest way to get started is just search for the name uh, the job that you are targeting so we search for bartender uh, we go and select this job title again this is again a job title and we try and grab all the job titles that appear uh, Uh, will be like lead bartender, senior bartender so it will give you a lot of variations just go and add all of them you can see the audience size growing up here you can add all the job titles that you can find with uh, the word bartender in it add, add uh, whatever comes under field of study or employers and uh, people uh, ask uh, ask how you do targeting so uh, the thing that has been most helpful for us recently is uh, Facebook has become very good at giving suggestions it was not that good earlier but it has become very good at suggestions earlier we used to uh, use the audience insights tool uh, recently they removed affinity I think they have added it back again but it's not as good as it was in the past so uh, the first and foremost thing we do is we go through the suggestions that Facebook gives and we add all of them the other thing and uh, the after that once you have done that part uh, you can <coughs> there are keywords that you can search with so uh, like I said the more you research the more you know so the keywords that you should be searching with I'll, give, I'll provide it uh, here so these are the keywords that when you search with this you'll get uh, 
uh, like uh, say you uh, with association forum magazine website you search for bartender associations on Google you'll get a lot of results and some of them might show up as an interest in the ads manager so let's go and search for bartender association and see what comes up so international bartenders association let's try that one and we see that it comes up as an interest so once we have added this I think Facebook will give us some more suggestions uh, and uh, guys you need to repeat this process with other keywords also that I have provided here so you try bartender association similarly you have to try bartender forum bartender magazine bartender website and this is just the beginning point I think you can uh, gather more such words like this and do this search on Google and once you get those results just come back in the ads manager and try those uh, try writing those here try writing those here and some of these might appear uh, for the targeting uh, I think Facebook is giving more suggestions now so I'll just go and grab the ones uh, that I know perform well so this is a magazine <coughs> this is again I think a website uh, th that uh, bartenders frequent you can see the audience size is growing up bartending school Alright, so you can see the audience size here has grown up to 360,000 people and I talked about broad interest uh, in the last video so this is a broad interest bartender if I add this the audience size will grow up uh, very large so you can see so it's one it has grown up to 1.4 million so probably I'll not include this interest but I know that this interest also performs well so I'll start with this one the audience size here shows three uh, three hundred sixty thousand people. So I I think uh, this audience size is good enough. Uh, I'd say that never go below hundred thousand people when you are targeting, and try to get it above uh, two hundred fifty thousand people if you can, in terms of audience, uh, because uh, Facebook has made it clear that they prefer bigger audience sizes and budgets that are a bit on a higher side so I think we are good here so I will move on to the next step we come to the placement part so we are running a, ads to a t-shirt so we'll remove messenger we'll remove this audience network we'll remove Instagram and we'll start with just feeds because feeds is the cream de la cream of Facebook placements uh, uh, when it appears in feed it feeds it shows up very nicely on the news feed uh, it gives you uh, all the space that you created your photo post with and we have tested Instagram also and though we got sales it was not profitable for us uh, probably you can test it uh, I've heard from people that it works well in some niches uh, right column ads you can use later for retargeting but for now we'll just uh, stick to the feeds uh, for our advertising and uh, guys you can uh, like 80 percent of, of traffic currently comes from mobile but uh, to start with uh, we select all devices because uh, we don't want to miss out on the other on the other 20 percent also we see that the conversion rate almost uh, is similar for us uh, for mobile and desktop so we we'll let it be all devices and oops, let's check it again and for the platforms we'll let it be Facebook feeds only uh, since we have collect, uh, started with the conversion objective so we'll uh, let it the optimization for AdWord delivery will let it be conversions and uh, again uh, the conversion window is something that is debated a lot in the group Facebook groups uh, we have tested both and I've seen that this one day after clicking works the best for us so we'll go with this and the next part is bid amount so when you are starting out it's always best to go with automatic uh, bidding uh, Facebook will uh, see your budget and the audience size and do the bidding for you depending on the uh, budget that they you have provided with, to them in the best possible manner 
and manual is something uh, that we'll get on probably in the later videos but it is advanced stuff so now for now we'll stick to automating bidding so i guess everything is taken care here in the ad set uh, in the ad set level so let's move on to the ad part so we have named it this uh, we'll just go and select the page that we are looking for so this is the page where we have made the post so uh, let's go uh, you select the page that uh, where you have made the post and uh, since the post is already existing you click on use existing post and select that post from the drop down once we have selected this and we this make sure that this part is selected track all conversions from your pixel the post is selected here so i think we are all set to review changes so that facebook uh, reviews our campaign and gets it active uh, since this was just for demonstration i'll not do it you just need to click on apply and your campaign will go live for advertising after that all right so that is it for creating your ads and i think i've already talked about the things in this slide uh, laser targeting versus going broad i uh, already said that facebook nowadays prefer larger audience sizes so try to always keep your audience above 100000 and uh, since you are yeah, since i recommend not starting in very big niches so 100000 is fine but try not to get it lower than that and uh, uh, then we also talked about multiple ad sets versus one or two ad sets so uh, uh, it's better to do fewer ad sets currently with uh, allocating uh, proper budgets to them than doing a lot of ad sets with smaller budget because it uh, just gives facebook more data more room to optimize your ads uh, when you have lower number of ad sets but giving them proper budget to find the people find the most apt people for your advertising all right all right guys so the next thing that we'll be looking at is reading the data in your ads manager deciding when to kill ads and scaling your ad campaigns so let's look at reading the data so i just realized that we that i had some data on this ad account from one of the <coughs> campaigns that we ran in the past so i'll show you that as an example so you can see this is the name of the campaign and when we click say like i mentioned uh, we used to do multiple ad sets in the past so you can see that this one has multiple ad sets and uh, the data points uh, for these ad sets you can see individually so let's look at it at, at the campaign level first so here it says the name of the campaign and uh, whether it's an active or inactive state since uh, I was optimizing it for purchase, it sh in the results column, it shows the number of purchases that it got and the number of uh, people that uh, this campaign reached in, o in overall. And the cost that I incurred per purchase is mentioned here, the overall amount spent and whether this was a campaign that uh, had an end date or ongoing is referred here. All right. So this is what Facebook is showing us by default. So, it will differ uh, depending on the campaign objective that you selected for example if you select page post engagement in the results section it will show you the number of engagements that your campaign got and uh, the cost uh, that you incurred per engagement all right uh, this is what facebook shows by default we can click here and go to customize columns and uh, set it to the uh, the columns that we need uh, to analyze our data so the things that i want to look at in addition to purchase and the cost per purchase and definitely the purchase and the cost per purchase that we achieved on a campaign is the most important metric when advertising on teespring because that is what we want to look at and it's very simple it's just money in versus money out if you are spending less money and getting more money in making more money on your teespring you should let your ads run if you are uh, spending more money on advertising than you are getting on your teespring campaigns you should stop those uh, campaigns and i don't mean that you should just stop those campaigns say you have a campaign 
where you have two ad sets and one ad set is running at profit and one ad set is at running at loss you should go inside that campaign and see the ad set that is running at loss and just stop that one and let the one that is running at profit uh, uh, at in active state in uh, in active state all right so uh, the other column that i need uh, that i look at is link clicks uh, add to website adds to basket and cost per website add to basket so when i i have checked these boxes and uh, when i click on apply you'll see that the column these columns were not appearing before but now appear for me and i can also see uh, the cost per website add to basket that i incurred and number of ads to basket that i got so you can consider it as levels so if I was having purchases here so if I wanted to look at uh, this campaign when it had spent less money and uh, if I needed to decide whether I should let the campaign run or stop I could have looked at link clicks so say I spent ten dollars and it has not got uh, it has got two or three link clicks only I feel that the campaign is not performing up to the mark and I could have stopped at that time only uh, the next level uh, so you can consider it the link clicks as the first level the ads to basket as the second level and purchase as the uh, uh, ultimate objective that you are looking for so uh, if i have link clicks i'll look at the uh, website ads to basket if i don't have purchases yet and if i see that there are some ads to basket uh, it means that there's a chance that this campaign might get purchases later on all right so these are the columns that you should uh, just go to go here and activate so that you can look at these columns also uh, when analyzing results all right so uh, the next part is when you should kill your ads so we have a protocol uh, in, in my company that if a campaign doesn't get sales any one sale in the first $20 ad spent we just stop it uh, there's a very popular saying don't get married to your designs we totally believe in it so uh, and since we run a lot of campaigns uh, if we don't have a protocol of stopping the campaigns uh, uh, at a set budget after it didn't get a sale uh, there's a chance that we might incur a lot of loss so uh, if we don't get a sale in the first 20 dollar ad spent we simply stop the campaign and we just move on and we try a new campaign and that is what you should be doing as well you might feel that the design has a lot of potential to perform but at the end of the day you should let your audience decide uh, just try to get uh, all the bits correct uh, before you start running ads uh, like i've already explained uh, but uh, after that also you will have a lot of campaigns that are going to fail like i mentioned in the last video uh, even now out of every 10 campaign that we do eight of them are going to fail it's just the nature of this business so just uh, make sure that you don't spend too much on one campaign if it is not getting sales uh, it is good to look at these metrics but at the end of the day the most important metric is the purchase and if you don't have a purchase in the first 20 dollar ad spent just stop that campaign and move on to the next design obviously try to uh, get the get your content your design and your advertising right using the methods that i showed before but even after that, there will be a lot of campaigns that are going to fail. So just please just stop it at $20 ad spent and move on uh, and try a new awesome content and a new design. All right. Uh, so uh, this is it uh, for uh, reading the data and deciding to when to kill ads. Uh, guys, the uh, next part is scaling your ad campaigns, which I'll cover uh, in detail in the next video. But I want to briefly touch on it. Uh, if you have a winning campaign, how you should be doing it and what we are doing it in our company. So there are two ways that you can do it uh, simply. Uh, the first is just increasing the budget on your working ad sets. And the second uh, method is duplicating the ad sets and letting the ones that are running profitably uh, run in the same manner without making any changes to them. So uh, we prefer duplicating the ad sets that are working so that we don't touch or make any changes to the one that is working uh, but, uh, because uh, we have seen that if we increase budget on a working ad set sometimes it disturbs disturbs the optimization and the algorithm of that particular ad set and it stops performing so 
we feel that uh, it's better not to touch the ad set that is performing well and we just duplicate it so say we have a ad set uh, which is performing well at a spend of $20 and by performing well I say that giving 50% uh, ROI at minimum say sp spending $20 and giving $30 uh, in revenue so what what uh, we'll do is uh, we'll just duplicate the same ad set uh, by keeping everything same in terms of targeting and placement uh, but we'll set the budget to $40 so we just double the budget on that and uh, we'll create a new ad set and we'll let the new ad set also run for a period of 24 to 48 hours and then look at it and see if it's running profitably or making a loss and if it's running profitably we'll continue the same chain uh, we'll uh, create a duplicate of this new ad set at a double budget of that so the so second ad set was running at a budget of $40 we'll create a new ad set at a budget of $80 and we continue keep uh, we continue this chain till the time that we are profitable uh, there will be a lot of instances when this new ad set will not be profitable so either we'll downscale the budget on this one or stop it altogether this way we avoid uh, uh, missing the algorithm on the ad set that is working for us uh, the other line of thought is if you have a working ad set you just increase the budget on that but uh, even when you are increasing budget on that it's recommended that you do it very gradually uh, 15 to 20 percent budget each day uh, I've totally seen it that if you increase the budget too much at one time it will totally mess the algorithm and your uh, working ad set will stop performing so even if you want to increase the budget on the same ad set do it gradually so if it's set to $20 I'd say that next day uh, don't go beyond 30 preferably 25 on the next day and then 30 on the day after that and that is how you should be doing it uh, I'll be talking about all this in detail in the next video and uh, the other advanced scaling methods that we use. Uh, I'll talk about manual bidding and uh, yeah guys I think this is it for this video. Uh, please let me know your feedback. I know there was a lot of technical stuff involved. I tried to break it down uh, as well as possible but uh, if there is something that you did not understand please let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll definitely reply to comments and I'll try to make it clearer for you uh, and let me know the feedback in the comment section. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.